2021 was a wild ride. It had an unexpected huge upturn early in the year, partially caused by billionaire Elon Musk, followed by huge retracements in July and then a general uptick, rounding off the year with a generally lackluster December. Now specifically, that's the crypto market as a whole that didn't do so well in December. Despite much of the market being down, some things have performed well, and today we are going to be joined by Cornucopius, which went from under three cents when it became tradable on the market on the 10th of December to presently around seven cents. Now, it is the first AAA level game being developed on Cardano, and I wanted to bring it to you because I feel the Cardano ecosystem is at really good lows, and in my opinion, it is likely that the whole Cardano ecosystem will benefit from a huge uptick at some point sooner rather than later as well as i am very interested to see where this game goes as being the first triple a level game on the cardano ecosystem today we will also cover some news we'll cover the nft marketplace on one chain that's opening today as well as get to your questions including any good questions that you have for co-founders robert and josh of cornucopius but before we get started i want to say if you are tuning in right now you may have noticed that many of the people that were with us in crypto two months ago, well, where are they? Yet you're here. Great job because you're in the right place at a great time. And even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes, this is exactly when it's best. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host, Jay Rain. And if you like money in crypto and are looking for a real investor's take on the crypto market, join the Rainmaker family by liking this video and subscribing with that all notifications bell enabled. Special note, you know this, but I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself, sharing with you how I think about crypto, specific ones I like, and the market in general. I do own or plan to own most of what I talk about on this channel because I don't talk about cryptos I don't believe in. All right. Well, we also want to share and thank our Patreon members. On Friday, we do a live Q&A with our Patreon members through Discord. It's a great community, and sometimes, occasionally, special doors come open that I can share with those members through there. Our Patreon members who have joined our Discord know exactly what I'm talking about. Sponsor disclaimer. It says at the beginning of this that there is sponsored content on this. That is really only because our strategic relationship with OneChain, who have been very good to us, and Cornucopius did not sponsor us to come on today. We asked them to come on today because I love the project and I want to bring them to you. All right, so join us, strap in for the show, and let's welcome our producer, D Money, in the joining me in the Crypto Rain Command Center. Hey, hey, what up, Jay? How's it going, man? Fantastic. Excited to have Cornucopia's co-founders join us. I've covered this project multiple times, and there's nothing like hearing from the team themselves. Yeah, for sure. It's it, I, I'm, I'm super excited about the project itself. They've done some really cool stuff. What, what I'm most excited about, and maybe I'm maybe I'm off on this, but the learn to earn aspect that they are doing, I, I, I haven't seen that anywhere else. And I think that it's a brilliant move. I think it's going to bring a ton of users. I'm really, really, really bullish about this project. I'm, I'm excited to, to have the guys on. So let's, uh, let's get the party started. Let's Should do we? it. All right. Now, back on September 20th, I covered up and coming AAA level game, specifically this one. I covered them also a month ago and then just a few days ago. And today I have the privilege of bringing you the co-founders of Cornucopias, Josh Jones and Robert Grieg. And we'll be bringing them on in just a second. All right, gentlemen, can you hear me okay? Perfect. Josh and Rob, thank you so much for joining us today. You bet. Glad to be here, man. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. Now, a lot of my audience familiar with Cornucopias. I've covered you a number of times. Um, I wonder if you could share with the audience uh, what Cornucopias is for those that haven't heard of it yet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Cornucopias is a metaverse-based NFT blockchain game. Uh, we've got multiple zones uh, that are going to have different themes, different theme zones that people can explore. There's going to be a city involved as well. We're going to be selling NFTs. And uh, yeah, it's it, there's, there's a lot of uh, really exciting features with the game. Um, the, the white paper is extensive. If you want to check out more about us, I would definitely recommend reading our white paper on our website, cornucopius.io. 
Now, if it's okay, I'm just going to take a second. I'm going to share with them uh, you, these NFTs. These are your vehicle NFTs that I'm sharing with them. And the promo that you released just on December 17th. They are sexy looking. Very futuristic, much like the Jetsons. Yeah, the bubble jet, man. We've got yeah. we've got that sale coming up pretty soon. Fantastic. So that promo came out on the 17th on YouTube. Uh, specifically, what's the timeline look like? Because your token came out and is now tradable since, I think, December 10th, right? That's correct. On the marketplace. And then you have this NFT sale. And then is that going to happen? You have a land sale that will happen sometime in the coming months. Could you give the audience idea of the timelines and what they look like for Corn Ucopia as far as the NFT sale, for the vehicles, the land sale, and then I'll ask about general timelines for the game itself. Yeah, we're targeting a public land sale uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we really, I, I need to check with Rob on announcing that date. Uh, okay. We really want the public land sale to be very soon, and we're also targeting the bubble jet sale uh, as well pretty soon. So. Um, yeah, Rob, do we want to announce any dates on that? Um, what we're doing at the moment is we're, we're just finalizing our our marketplace, our NFT marketplace, um, and we're doing the final testing with our OG members of our Discord. And as a reward for being the first members in, in our Discord, the OGs are getting a free NFT. Um, that in itself will will come with some rarities. So, so there are... We're doing quite a lot with our OGs, and then once once we finalise that marketplace and our technology that links with the blockchain, we'll then be releasing a version of the the Bubble Jet Sprinter car uh, for public sale, and that is likely to be the last either the last two weeks of January or, or the, the very last week in January, depending how testing goes over the, the next few weeks. But we're not rushing it. It's something that we've been building over the last three months. Um, we're just at the final stages of testing and integrating at the moment. And this will be an NFT marketplace on Cardano. Yes. Well, it'll be, it'll be a marketplace for, for our NFTs. Okay. And, and yes, everything will be purchasable, purchasable with ADA. Perfect. So the, it's the an NFTs internal one. are all being minted on, on aid on Cardano, yes. Yeah, We are perfect. trying to find a way to accept Kofi tokens right now uh, for NFTs, but uh, we can't guarantee anything there yet. Definitely on our website sale for the public part on our website, those will be, uh, we'll be accepting ADA for. Now, uh, um, so that brings to mind, um, you just recently, I think this morning, announced that um, they're staking rewards for the Cornucopia's token, Kopi, right? Yeah, correct. If you go to our Twitter or Telegram or Discord, you'll see the uh, instructions and the link there on uh, where to go to stake. It's through uh, a company, a project called Tokens Farm. Okay. So if they track you down on Twitter, and I, I might be able to pull that up later um, on Twitter, they can find the correct link, make sure they get to the right link. And then yeah, they can you stay. can add a, a link to the description as well. I'll send that over to you. Perfect. Great. And uh, the current viewers that are on, let me see, they're joining us. We got the live stream going well. Looks like we got some good um, chat coming in. Um, so general timeline, we have possibly those NFTs in the marketplace coming out later this month. We don't have a timeline yet on the uh, land sale. And then generally, what does the timeline look like for the game itself? Yeah, so, so we, we're putting together um, a team of mobile developers at the moment. So our first offering will be the mobile play-to-earn game, and that will be released in Q2 of this year. Um, I think mobile first is is a is a really important strategy for us, especially with some of our partners that, um, that we've that we've recently announced. Um, we're building on the Unreal Engine five, um, so our first release of the PC version of the game that will be in Q four of the of this year. So we've got a really busy busy year of of building out the the mobile team, um, enhancing the the art team. Um, Building upon our um, development team, we're also building on a on a on a .NET team. We're working on the back end, the decentralized side. So it's it's a huge growth and delivery year. 
And Dee can add in a link later for a video where I show the website and I show some of your other promo stuff where they get a feel for the world. What is, the graphics are incredible. And that has me excited. The first AAA level game on Cardano. And by a long ways, I, I don't even know anyone else who has announced. And yet, you've been working on this for quite a while already. I want to see, uh, before we jump over to the chat and see what questions they have, is any other special announcements you can share? Yeah. So, uh, well, first of all, I want, I want to comment on something that Rob had said, mentioning the mobile game launch. That, I just want to add to that, that we have a partnership with Tingo, and it's a, a Tingo Mobile, and they're in Nigeria. And basically, that gets us access to over 10 million sub Tingo subscribers, and we've announced that as well. Uh, but that plays in really well to this mobile game uh, launch. We're really trying to get the mobile games out ASAP because that target market is uh, very, it's, it's play to earn and learn to earn is perfect for that market. And it's a great synergy between the two projects. So there's a lot uh, upcoming that hasn't been announced yet with Tingo uh, mm -hmm. in addition to that. So keep, keep your eyes peeled because we got some really cool stuff on the way there. Um, but regarding the uh, announcement, you know, we have a pretty amazing video coming out on Friday. And it's going to be kind of like our other videos. It, it'll be a teaser to walk through some of the things that we're developing in the game. And one of the things that we're developing is the ability to build your own house because people have their own personal bubble and they need to be able to build a house. So we actually will be demoing the building of the house feature, along with a lot of the other features that we worked on over the holidays. So it's very exciting video. In fact, it's a game changer for us because what this allows us to do, this puts us on a track where we can actually have our community start building and participating with us. And, and that creates a lot of ability to strategically take a direction of a community build and, and, and really involve our community in what we're doing. So it's very exciting. Love it. I, I love that you've kept us abreast, especially with the video showing what things are going to look like. For video games, it's important. And so I, I love how good, how well your team has kept us updated and kind of teasing some things out that really gives an idea of how the game development is coming along. So, yeah, so this Friday then. So it, we'll put a link also to their YouTube channel so you can just follow that and subscribe. That way you can get notified when that video comes out. All right, I want to look over at the chat and see what questions or comments they have. Chris Keller is excited about Learn to Earn. Yeah, Cardano Christoph says, Build, Play, and Learn to Earn. Go, go, go. I'm excited about the Learn to Earn, too. I, I'm looking forward to the day when actually video games get incorporated into education, right? Because there are so many things that, like there's so many opportunities with learn to earn and that education can be fun. It doesn't have to be painful. I took a class from a physics professor who was a multimillionaire. He's just teaching for fun at the, um, at the college level in some countries, at the high school level in the U.S., uh, essentially grades 11 and 12. And he had such a high pass rate for advanced um, for college level courses at the high school level. One of the things he did is he put actual physics experiments where you would shoot projectiles at other things and you had to calculate like the spring and how much power it would give it based on the mass of the projectile it was shooting and it made it math and physics fun and so he had uh, you know the, the kids just loved it and ate it up. Well, why can't we do something like that in video gaming and have education involved has been one of my feelings. So you're the first I've heard talk about learn to earn. I'm very excited about where this could go. Yeah, there's a lot that we have in store uh, there. In fact, we have a partnership with the European Business University um, and some interesting stuff happening there where we might actually end up doing a TED Talk, uh, which, is, which is pretty cool, uh, a TED Talk in Luxembourg. Um, and uh, that would be set up by James Muley, and we're still in discussions on that, so it's not solidified necessarily. But there's some cool stuff happening. We want to incorporate uh, Learn to Earn into the game. Without a doubt, that's going to be there. Um, the European Business University will be providing scholarships uh, to their university uh, for people that go into the metaverse area of, 
of their castle on our game, which is pretty cool. But there's also a, a variety of other ways that we can bring in the gamification of education. Uh, and and we're, we're, we're talking, Rob and I were just talking about this yesterday. So there's, there's a lot that we can do. Um, it's just a matter of right now, we have an incredibly full plate. And so how do we <laughs> Um, execute on everything that we have to deliver. And so some things will take more time than others, but um, it's definitely on the roadmap. I love where you're going and you have to tackle a few challenges at a time. So I hope you kick off something, not only in the game, but worldwide that happens more. Why can't we make education more fun? Why can't we make it that there's incentive driven education, right? One of the problems is as adults, we're telling our kids, ah, you need to learn, you need to go to school. Uh, what if all of a sudden there's little incentives that the kids are interested in and all of a sudden incentives get aligned, right? So that they like going because they like what they're doing and learning. I, I think that's possible. Yeah, it yeah. Is. I, I think that's really important. And at the same time, we can lower the barriers, barriers of entry as well. So children that are in, um, you know, lesser, uh, you know, c countries that the education is not the same standards as other part of, of the world can enjoy the same facilities and they can be in the same classroom. Um, you know, we, we can have, say, African children um, in the same classrooms as, as Americans and, and Europeans and, and Britons and, and taught at the same level. But like you say, gamifying the learning process, there will also be be earning um, rewards for themselves and, and it'll be fun. Um, and I think lowering that, that entry and, and leveling that playing field is really, really important. I think learn to earn is, is one of the three pillars that, that we've always said from, from, from day one. So we have play to earn, we have learn to earn. And I think which are the biggest part of our game will be build to earn, um, but we've yet to explain that. But, but, but at the moment, play to earn and learn to earn it is, is definitely things that, that people are catching on with. Yeah, that's exciting. Really, if you think about human capital, how much of the world human capital is not being utilized because lack of opportunity of education in some of the third world countries, that when, because geniuses can be born in anywhere, in any circumstance, from the wealthiest family to the poorest, but often middle class and wealthy have access to education, some of the poorest don't. When you change that, because they can do things, they can have education on their mobile phone, that opens up the spectrum that a lot more of the geniuses that are born into this world can realize their potential. That's exciting to me, no yeah, matter what country they're born into. I think that's a really important point that all you need is, is a internet access. Well, internet access is not everywhere at the moment. So the, there is a couple of, of, of partners um, that, that, that we have and a couple of companies that we're working with that are expanding the communications throughout the world in Africa and India and, and other parts of the country that don't have the telecoms um, connectivity and once that layer is there then then yes like the tingo um partnership proves once everybody you know 10 million people that now have internet access then yes they have access to all these educational platforms that, that weren't available before yeah so i think the viewers are starting to if they didn't already get how web3 and where crypto is going and how it changes the world this is this is it this is one of the ways and it very much fits with the cardano vision want to take a look at okay perfect d just gave everyone the link to the cornucopia site yeah where can i buy copia's token they asked I'll, I'll answer that i usually don't ask the founders specifically about the copia token uh right now it's on the binance smart chain right Am I remembering that right? Yeah, on Pancake Swap. On right? Pancake Swap. So, and the, and the ticker is COPI, so it's COPI. There's not an A on the end. It's COPI. What I do is I go to CoinGecko, I put on COPI, and then it brings it up, and then I click on the Pancake Swap link right there. If you click on the Markets tab, and that shows the link, I always click on that one directly. Yeah. That way, I never go to a fake Pancake Swap link or whatever, and I know I have exactly the right token. All right. Um, Jay, the, uh, Stardust Runner, he asked, uh, will the land and the bubble cars both be usable in the mobile version, or does that come with the broader launch in Q4? Did you hear the question? Um, does the bubble car and the land, will they be usable on the mobile version or just in the Q4 version? So at the moment, the land will be used in the, in the desktop application. Okay. Um, the vehicle itself, we haven't announced what those mobile game 
with with an S will look like. We'll, we'll release a couple of games um, and a regular amount of, of games. So we'll have pure variation in those. And that's something that we'll build upon over, over the years. So there'll be different variety in the mini games. From day one, we've always had the plan of building mini games into the desktop version. And the mobile is a perfect opportunity to bring some of those mini games out. So I am really sure that the um, the, the the car NFTs will definitely find themselves with, within that mobile game. Um, and definitely some of our NFT characters that you've seen at the moment. Uh, fantastic. And the staking return one, Naaman Sani, um, I don't, I checked it out this morning, but I was, doing some other prep work, 350%, is that the current staking return? That's what they're saying in the chat. No, I think it's less than that at this point. There's okay. now already- It falls based on how much is coming in, right? So right. based on how much, because it's a fixed return, the more people that stake, the return comes down. But Correct. Um, and we have farming of our token as well. That, that's been happening for the last few weeks. Staking is just new today as an additional product, but farming has been going on uh, for, a, for a few weeks, and that's quite a high API. APY and and that. that's the Kopi token farm with, uh, what's the other side of that? Is it BNB or USDT? Kopi BNB. BNB, okay. So you can provide liquidity with Kopi and BNB. Uh, the single-sided staking is what launched today, that you could just stake the Kopi token. Correct. All right. Perfect. And yes, a lot of chat going on here. Let me see. Any other questions, D? You yeah, saw? there's so Bearish Bull, one of our uh, uh, loyal listeners or, or watchers, he asks, will this will this eventually be VR enabled? Uh, I don't know if you can hear D on the question. Yeah, we can um, hear him. OK, perfect. And uh, Rob may be best to answer that, but I would say that, you know, we're, we'll definitely be testing that and, and possibly heading in that direction. We think it's a little early to go too aggressively. In that direction right now, uh, I don't know if you'd add anything that, to that, Rob, but we do intend to go in that direction. Well, yes. I think the, the, the beauty of being the metaverse is we can go in different, so many different directions. I mean, there are 12 different zones that, that we're building themselves. They're all different theme zones. So we're starting off with a farming zone. We have um, a samurai zone and we have a, a Western zone. So those are the three that will be released this year. On top of that, we'll be building a, a different nine additional um, theme zones and then we're going to build a huge city which will have 12 theme districts and, and these are, are separate within themselves um, and in those districts there's there's the opportunity for commercial companies to come in and have their um, their links and, and and promote their their products um, on our roadmap we definitely have integrations well, well future development once we once we're on mobile and then we're on desktop we have plans looking at um, going on the console, so the Xbox, the Playstations, then we're looking at smart televisions. So I'm pretty sure that VR definitely comes into, into the mix somewhere, but it's not something that we've announced at the moment. But we, are, we have um, partnered with Network, um, which is a, a, another metaverse project, and, and they're heavily into VR. So I won't be surprised if you know VR finds its way into our game seems to me that your priorities are in line. I'd prefer to see you nail the gameplay loop first, yeah. right? And get all that down and then add VR. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's definitely something that we've, you know, we, we've, we've been planning the game since January. So we've had six months initial um, research before we, we put the company and the initial team together. So we only started actually developing in July. Um, we've had, the, the following six months of building prototypes and the building our assets ourselves. And while we've been building our assets, this is why we've also been able to produce the, these, the, the marketing um, videos that we've done. So everything that you see, you know, it's not CGI, they are playable demos. And we've, we've released demos of, of myself going around the, the bubble with the, with the, the characters. Um, we will continue to, to do that over the next year. Um, and what we've done is, in terms of the team, we've just really put a couple of key art directors and developers in place to build out the, the prototypes and the planning and continue to do that planning. Um, and then over, now that we're at a stage that we're really happy and, and we've got together a lot of the planning of, of what the gameplay should look like for the metaverse, this next six months is going to be growth in terms of team and, and productivity. 
So, so yeah, you, you're right. Everything we're doing is is all nicely planned. We're not rushing into anything. We have in total probably be a three or a four year rollout before we we have all the zones and all the city actually built. But then on top of that, we will constantly build in mini games and mobile games and, and partnering with other um, metaverses and other NFT projects and other learn to earn facilities. So, you know, so we, we plan on, you know, in, in total, the, the game will net, the development will never end, but it, it may take um, five or six years be, before we, we have every feature that we want to put in at, at, at that moment in time. And then obviously technology will move on and we'll be able to advance and, and move to, to wherever the next, but I think smart televisions is going to be a huge leap forward as well, but we're not there at the moment. So, so this is why our roadmap after the PC then goes to console, but smart televisions is, is another game changer. That's, that's, that's on the horizon. I think it's important to also mention that the, uh, we have it uh, aligned in our tokenomics. It's set up in our tokenomics that we, we will fund a metaverse entity. Uh, and that metaverse entity is gonna be very strategically uh, set up to have multiple divisions, real estate, NFTs, esports, uh, you know, a variety of divisions that will build out a music and the arts um, that will be about bringing other companies, other entities into our, into our lands, into our game. Uh, and that's a that's very strategic move that we're taking so that we can continue our core focus of building out the game and the assets and that the metaverse entity will be bringing in some of these other partners as well. And so that's coming up in, uh, as part of the roadmap for this year, uh, probably more like Q2. It's awesome. I like that you're working on the mobile game, right? Just to give us something to see, to touch, to play with. It, it really helps as human beings helps us be patient even when we're naturally a little bit patient just gives us something to see and to work with right so yeah that was great that you put that on the roadmap and are rushing to get us something to work with with the environment right it just helps uh, us investors be patient as well for the longer run yep well thank you gentlemen for joining us i did have one more question smurf boy 17 says will there will the land be able to be rented out for passive income yeah, I think absolutely. But part of the game. I would say passive rewards. Sorry, Josh. Okay. Not passive income. Go ahead, Rob. Yeah, part part of the gameplay is is built into your, your home life, your your work life, and your entertainment life. So so you move from your bubble, which is a home life, you do your work life, which is in the theme zones. And in those theme zones, the 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 buildings are all player owned. And the buildings themselves will be able to upgrade it. And once you upgrade your building, you will then be able to rent them out to other players. And the, if you own land or if you rent property, that will unlock additional play to earn. So there's massive advantages of A, owning property within our metaverse and B, also renting it. So, so the loop works for, for um, both sides of that. And then when you've done your work life job, you can come back and you can build up your bubble or then you can go for your entertainment where you'll be able to, to see live music events or sporting events and all that kind of activity will happen in the, the city when, when that comes future down the road. Matt. Great answer. Well, thank you, Rob and Josh, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure having you on, and I, I'm sure the audience, I can tell by the chat, they've loved it as well. Thank you, gentlemen. I know you've been busy, so th thank you so much for joining us. You bet, man. Yeah. Thanks a lot for having us on. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right. All right. Here's a little preview I was showing everyone of the... The Jet, specifically, if you want to see more in-depth videos on them, these are three videos that I've done on them. See, this was the original one three months ago, uh, as well as a month ago we talked about profiting from the coming Metaverse boom, as well as um, on Christmas Eve we talked a little bit about them for 2022. Let me share with you um, their Twitter. If you haven't followed them on Twitter, it's at Cornucopia's Game. And so that's what you want to follow to them. Here's a link to their Discord as well. All right, so, ooh, there we go. A um, little bit on Cardano. 
the timing on this game couldn't have been better. They do have a token that's now launched and tradable. It's not as cheap as it was when it first came out. I can't tell you exactly what the game token will do in the short term. Long term, you can see why I'm very bullish on it. Sometimes when tokens come out, um, they continue pumping for a while. Sometimes they go up and then they retrace. So if you're looking at this one, I can't tell you what, what I usually do in these situations where I don't know if it's going to go up or down from here. I just dollar cost average into the ones that I like. But if you look at Cardano's token, this is really good setup for a pump. It's pulled all the way back to this resistance zone. And in July, if we talk about timing in general, look at how July was. And July had a lot of feelings like what you're feeling now, that it's generally slow. A lot of people got bored and they left. Well, if you look back on the charts, why would anybody be leaving? The prices were at their best price. Now, we can't say exactly what's going to happen here, but my guess is when you look back, you'll say, man, I wish I was around early <laughs> December, even early January, because look how good those prices were. I guess it's more mid-December, early January. But we can't say what the future holds. This is why I, I buy low, and then I'm just patient, and then I sell when things are high. Now, timing-wise, in general, I've only been in crypto for four years now, though I was an investor in other markets prior. And here's the basic pattern I've seen in real estate, stocks, and then also in crypto. Though crypto is a very fast market, and it makes stock and the volatility in stocks look tame. Now, in crypto, when it gets boring, and m most people have left, ooh, yeah, we're in trouble, Jay. Something's going on with the camera. It seems like you're frozen. I'm not. Okay. I'm hoping that the, the audio is at least coming through right now. Let's see. Thanks it. to Kelkshiz. He he's the first one who brought it up that the that the camera feed froze. Will you uh, switch it off and on real quick? You yeah. might have to just physically. Well, we're dealing. I don't know if you can see that OBS is not responding right now. So yeah, audio is coming through. Vid is frozen, according to. Okay, to will you Avenue. jump up and just switch, and maybe that'll solve OBS. It'd be interesting. What would happen if we have to restart OBS in the middle of it? Okay, OBS came back online, and so we might. Yep. I think we'll end up fine here. Crisis averted. All right. Still Hopefully going. Anyway. Audio good. Let us know. Did it come back? Did video come back? Ha ho, huzzah. Thanks, Chris, for, for pointing that stuff we out. We have for video. Us. In crypto, when it gets boring and most have left and aren't paying attention anymore, is when the very best prices are out there. I mean, that's exactly what July looked like. And it isn't until the price rebound, rebounds and it's already going with massive gains that a lot of people come back. And we've usually missed, or I didn't say we, because we are here during this time, but the people that aren't here during this time, they've massively missed a bunch of the gains and then often catch just in time to catch the retrace themselves. And this is why I say over and over again, buy when I buy when it's boring, right? So how are you feeling about the market right now? I want to check in the chat. It feels boring, right? Feels well, boring for me, that's for sure. It's, um, you know, I mean, it is what it is, but like, yeah, we had such high hopes for December, right? It, November, mm -hmm. December, and <clears throat> yeah, now with the new year, I mean, I don't know if, it, if how much there is to um, potentially people in the United States uh, dumping to, for, for tax purposes at the end of the year, but that should be past us, and uh, yeah, um, but, but I, I am curious to see what people bring up in the chat. Yeah, what's interesting is there's an article that came out this morning on whales scooping up Bitcoin. We know Michael Saylor picked up a whole bunch of Bitcoin. We know that, uh, what other major investor picked up a ton of Bitcoin? I forget, and some unknown whale bought massive amounts. And so the whales, if you look through on-chain analysis, because of the blockchain, you can see who's buying and who's selling. And a lot of the big wallets are scooping up more Bitcoin when it's cheap because whales think like investors. They buy when it's boring. Retail often gets frustrated when it's boring and exit while these investors are buying. And then all of a sudden retail gets way excited when crypto hits all-time highs and that's when those with the investor mindset are now taking profits. And so that's why I bring up these things and, you know, the cute little sayings like buy when it's boring because it does help keep investor mindset front of mind because 
crypto plays with our emotions, right? A lot of people that are buying crypto right now, they don't have a long investment background. We get our emotions involved and then we start acting irrational. And it crushes our dreams. Because look at Luna. You could have bought Luna back in July. In fact, I actually lucked out and did. Six and a half dollars was roughly my price. And it went all the way up. And whether it's going to keep going, is it too late to buy now? <laughs> Probably. We do not chase into green candles, right? This is when investors are taking profits, not when they're buying. All right. So good, uh, good stuff coming in from the chat. Uh, uh, Chris Ashby says, the market is very boring and I spent all my cash, <laughs> but, I, but I'm chomping at the bit to get uh, to get going. And then Marcus Di Giovanni says, getting slightly impatient because my family thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I totally went through that too. They no longer, actually one still thinks I'm crazy, but the rest have come on board, at least to some degree. And, and um, <laughs> to some degree, because they might partially still think I'm a little bit crazy, but... <sighs> Yeah, thus is life, right? They'll, they'll come around, which is funny. And when they see the results, right, they, they've come around a lot because of that. And you'll have that. I've just had more time at this than most of you. And this, thankfully, I had 20 years experience investing prior to this. So I could get a lot of my emotions out of the way, though I still did make some dumb mistakes when I was new. I want to share with you an up and coming one. I'll probably get more focus in the future. Now, I've been covering these guilds, play to earn guilds, because I think this is a big thing for the future. And the reason is because it organizes games and gamers in ways that are helpful and useful. Basically, because it's not like it's a volunteer army that they get to work for them and with them. But as we're seeing some of these in-game assets, the prices can get astronomical and thus enters the need for a guild that the guild can loan them assets. And so I covered Avogadro Guild recently and their token launch. It launched on Copper Launch. I wanted to show you the price. Remember we were talking about that, but the price people started buying so much here, the price actually went up once it reached this point. Bottom to 86 cents, went all the way to $1.60. Now, Avocado is one of the largest play to earn guilds. Play It Forward has a massive number of members. They've got 2,000 scholars, but 40,000 members. It's quite big. And there was just a Coin um, Telegraph article on them today. You have 40,000 member players in the guild. So they're raising funds. They're not ready to be out and tradable for a little bit. Um, but Avocado Guild is now, and you can see what it did when once it wrapped up on the copper launch here, then a lot of the liquidity went over to, um, let's see, this is specifically on Uniswap and MEXC. And you could have bought it, probably you wouldn't have been able to get in here, but $1.47, and that's kind of flatlined here with a market cap right now about 90 mil. So these market caps can do well, but if they become a big thing in the future, four years from now, six years from now, eight years from now, some of these bigger guilds that do really well, like Play It Forward is huge, Avocados, Guild, uh, Dow, <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right, Avocado Dow, which is another guild, absolutely gigantic, um, they will become big, big things, and they will have huge, huge um, areas within like Africa, Central America, South America, all over Asia. So keep an eye on them because I think they're a big part of the future. I also wanted to just briefly mention a game that I've had my eye on in a while. I want to cover it for you more in depth coming up, and that's Fight of the Ages. This uh, looks really cool. The reason I want to bring it up to you now is they're doing tons of giveaways. And why not, if you're in crypto, follow them and enter some of their Glean competitions and other things because they're doing all kinds of giveaways. I have a feeling that this one is going to be worth a lot. So why not see if you can win some free giveaways because they've done a number of them. And they're really growing. In fact, gosh, look at these Twitter followers. When it gets this big and they do a lot of giveaways, some of these end up being bots because some people have bots programmed to help them win giveaways. But 177,000 Twitter followers. Their telegram is absolutely gigantic. Now, And that's part of the thing, like, People say, oh, some of those are bots, and that's true. Some of them are bots. But this is also the kind of signs we see on things that come out and do really, really big. All right. 
I also want to bring up really quick that an NFT marketplace is coming to one chain through open zoo, which was done by zookeeper. And so this is just announced today that you'll be able to trade NFTs essentially on one chain through open zoo. So you can check this out um, on zookeepers official and that's uh, at zoo farming. And then you can click on this and get to the medium article and everything and give you an idea of what's there. Now we do do, do do, do 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 a one chain giveaway. Thanks to our strategic relationship with one chain. We thank them because uh, we're able to give away 125 won every week. And we'll be giving that away later this week. So thanks to them for that. Um, that's been a lot of fun. All right, so, oh, this is the article here. I did want to reserve some time so we can get to some news and then some more of your thoughts. Real quick, let's address Bob the Builder. Thank you for the super chat. Sports announced that they failed their investors, but will do better next time. You still bullish on them, bought the dip because it's so low. Um, could you follow that up with, they announced that they failed their investors, meaning that their token price hit lows? Because I've still seen them getting intellectual property and other things. I'm not aware of, like, that statement. So I'm curious as to exactly what they say there. I just bought some more on Spores, too. So um, I, I doubt they'd be closing up shop. But if they did, that would not be a good sign. Yeah, I mean, it says, but but they'll do better next time. I don't know if that means, like, with it, it, with future partnerships or, or what. So, yeah, Bob, if you can elaborate a little Definitely bit on elaborate that. Definitely elaborate on that. Uh, specificity, especially if you have a link to the, if something specific we can look at on their actual statement, that would be huge. In fact, let me just see if... Oh. Yeah, no, they're not going anywhere. Look, just this. Out with the old, in with the new from Sports Network, sending you all our best wishes. They might be worried about, like, oh, the token price is way down, and we failed our investors. I don't know. I love opportunities like this. Look at where Ecomi's token was just a year ago. It was in the dumps. It was one two hundredth of where it is today, right? So... That, that just happens, especially as you come out and some of your tokens are vesting and there's sell pressure and then, you know, you're still in the building phase. That's all normal. But uh, they do have a very service-oriented team, so I wouldn't be surprised if they said something like, oh, we failed our investors, but we're going to try harder. And to really do it, I don't feel like they failed us. I think this is just normal and natural, and they've just been out of the spotlight. Even though they've been doing some good intellectual property rights for NFTs in the Asian market, exactly what they promised, sometimes it just gets out of sight, out of mind, which makes for great pickups for investors like me when I see the team still working hard and doing the things that they committed to do, and then the price falls off a cliff. That makes me happy, not sad. So, um, yeah. I'm still very bullish on them. Unless I see some sign that they're wrapping up shop and then do better next time, uh, that would not be an acceptable answer for me. All right. Did they? Okay, some other questions related to that. Well, what news did you want to look at today, D? Yeah, well, let's. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is so. I mean, just just covering the the news or the the year as a whole, right? I mean, happy new year, by the way. We didn't get to to say that to the Rainmaker fam, or I didn't even say it to you. So happy new year. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, looking at the price of Bitcoin versus these major stories that have happened throughout the year, right? So. Um, so yeah, at the beginning there were, there was a lot of institutional buying that was happening, and then then the huge stuff in February February eighth is when uh, when Elon Musk announced that Tesla um, had had invested at one and a half billion dollars into Bitcoin. So it, that that was one of the first signs of of what we've seen with Mark Zuckerberg talking about metaverse and 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 it pumping those. Um, you know, maybe maybe elaborate a little bit on on what what you think Elon did to to Bitcoin this year and and the market in general and the power that they have. It's amazing the power billionaires have. We've seen it twice this year. First was earlier this year, where we saw Elon Musk pull like uh, when he tweeted about Bitcoin. He said, "My safe word is Bitcoin." 
And then he, he tweeted some more about it. And then Tesla bought some Bitcoin. Now, other massive investors were buying Bitcoin. George Soros bought millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. Other people bought lots of Bitcoin. But Elon Musk saying that he has more, possibly m the most amount of social capital in the world related to financial matters as well. And so when he tweeted it, the price absolutely took off. And I partially credit him or blame him for the early year pump. I don't know, you know, it, it, the market does what the market does. And he's a private individual. He's free to say whatever he wants. So it took off. All the people in crypto loved him for about a month until he said, oh, Tesla's going to sell off some of its Bitcoin because Bitcoin isn't very environmentally friendly. And then the market absolutely dumped and came down a tremendous amount. Yeah, you can see May 12th, that's when he made that announcement. I think in, I think in March, he said you can buy a Tesla with Bitcoin. So that's how, that's how quickly they flipped on that. And, but, but yeah, I mean, just seeing, uh, you know, here on November, November 26th, um, you know, renewed COVID concerns. That's what we've we've been feeling right for the last you know month probably. Um, but just just kind of interesting to see. I mean, so many things. Coinbase went public on April fourteenth. Um, the futures, right? The SEC approved Bitcoin futures on yeah. on, on October fifteenth, and that led to the to the all time high of Bitcoin. Um, but but really just a crazy busy year, right? And and seeing how the news affects uh, affected Bitcoin, I think is pretty interesting to look at. We saw that massive pump, and what's funny about pumps is they bring even more gains as people FOMO in, and so that's why I think this year we're gonna have something massive, like three times the size of what we had in March. Because as Bitcoin breaks 100,000, I keep saying this because it's still true. When Bitcoin breaks 100,000, that's going to bring a lot of people that have been on the sidelines in, and they're going to be FOMOing into this. What uh, other news do yeah, you want to look at? Yeah, oh, so yes, South Korea, it cracks down on play-to-earn games. Um, so, yeah, the South Korean government, they've, they've essentially asked uh, both Apple and Google to block any play-to-earn apps, um, games in their app store, Google Play, that sort of a thing. Um, it says, you know, basically that they could earn more than 10,000 Korean won, which is $8 and 41 cents. Um, and so that's illegal in South Korea. Um, so far, uh, neither Apple or Google have, have, they've not explicitly banned them, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, what's, uh, what's your reaction to, to this sort of a thing? So it's the old guard trying to prevent innovation, right? And they usually use regulators as their weapons. So the existing businesses, this is why the more you give government power, the more that they have the ability to abuse it, and they often do, because then they, they're more responsible to their donors than their voters, which is a bad setup. And then you get stupid legislation. And so we see this throughout history. It's not a new problem. It's an ever long existing problem. And so that's what you're seeing. It's absurd that like they're trying to protect their people from making money. It's illegal to make more than eight twenty six a day from the internet. How stupid is that? Yeah. Well, why would it be? And why would regulators want to crack down on their own citizens making money? Because if South Korea does this, guess what? El Salvador would be like arms wide open, and South Korea will just leave themselves in the dust. And then all their people will clamor and be like, "What the heck are you doing?" You know. But sometimes it can. It can hold the country back for a couple of years because then what I like in this world global system is when some countries make dumb decisions. We've seen the U.S. regulars make some dumb decisions. Then other countries just open their arms wide open and embrace the new technology. And those countries get a huge benefit for being early adopters. Look at El Salvador and what they're doing. It's amazing. And I remember 25 years ago, I, I worked with Latino immigrants. Um, that's why I speak Spanish. And I spent a couple of years working with them. And a bunch were from El Salvador. And at the time, it was like the second, San Salvador was the second most dangerous city in the world. And um, it's come a long ways. And really, uh, crime is usually an indication of corruption. And so when crime goes way down, it's an indication that your politicians have gotten a lot less corrupt. So, I mean, no country is exempt from corruption. They're politicians. It's a systemic thing. But it's usually an indication of how corrupt every any country is at any given time. Yeah, Jay, so we've got a couple minutes. I mean, we're about, about 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to real real quick go through yes. a couple of these. One of, one of these is this is kind of... Um, 
whatever it's uh, self fulfilling. But I'm a huge Final Fantasy nerd. I loved fi- Final Fantasy three on the Super Nintendo is like one of my all time favorite games. So I was excited to see Square Enix. They plan to invest more in blockchain gaming in 2022. Um, you know, not not a whole lot to say about it, but just it's another you know AAA gaming studio that's that's putting their money into blockchain, right? Yeah, it that's that's really good news, right? Final Fantasy is one of the biggest video game brands of all times, and so we're seeing the AAA level games come into crypto now. Some of this is going to happen a lot slower than you think, and I saw this with um, Engine e- ENJ's token like in the middle of the crypto winter sony announced that they were partnering with them to put it on their phone and the price went from like five like 0.5 cents or something to 50 cents went absolutely crazy or maybe it was five cents to 50 cents and then over the next couple months it retraced all the way back near that five cent mark and the reason is is sometimes as investors there's exciting things like this that come out but people don't realize how long it takes for this to happen. Now, four years is not a long time, but in crypto, that feels like 12 years. It, it feels like a tremendous amount of time. And so it, it's smart what Cornucopias is doing. Illuvium is also doing this, so is Star Atlas, that they're trying to do little mini games to give their people something tangible so that they don't have to wait for forever for the... It, it's better to do that and then release little updates to it than oh yeah, we're going to have a really, really good game four years from now. So a lot of games like and AAA level gaming studios are taking notice of crypto. And they might even announce that they're going to do something, but it's going to take a while. Unless, like say, Final Fantasy figures out a way to put their game, a game that they already have or they're working on, on the blockchain, integrate it, then that can be done if it's an already working game and tested game. They can integrate it with blockchain within a matter of months. But to take something from scratch or even like a new version and add it, that's like a four-year development time. And so I think gaming, this is going to be a big year for some of these crypto things that take off. I do think a lot of them are going to retrace by a lot. And when people doubt that, look at Spores. This is a perfect example. I, I still like this project. I would be shocked if they're wrapping up. In fact, I'm going to reach out to them and see if we can have them come on and talk to us their team. So they're at 0.427 cents. But look at this retracement from their highs. They went all the way to 10 cents. So they're presently retraced 95% from that price. Now, I like this where it's starting to flatten out right here. And that's what I look at as an indication to buy, right? And what I like is right now you can buy it on gate.io. Oh, that's not what I'm looking at. That's my... So we have a link. If you use our link for gate.io, it does give you 20% of your trading fees back. And so you don't have to use our link, but it'll get you 20% back. I do like gate.io. I think they're an up-and-coming exchange that's going to do phenomenal things, and they have a lot of these ones that are only tradable on Uniswap. They have them on gate.io. Now, another place you can get specifically spores, you can get on PancakeSwap as well. Now, when I'm trying to buy them, I never go to PancakeSwap and find them. I always click on the link here and open it up so that I make sure I get to not a copy of pancake swap and I get to the right trading pair. So there's just a note on that. Um, So look for these kind of, at least I look for these kind of retracements and that is always the risk that when you're buying things that are low, sometimes the, the projects do close up shop and fold and go out of business completely. But even when that happens sometimes, as long as you're diversifying across multiple things, if it turned around and went the other way and it just went up to its previous highs, that's a 20x from here. That's significant. If it pushes back past its previous highs, that could be a 50x or a 100x from here. So now just notice, note, they do fall in the higher risk category and that is why the higher potential are there. But I haven't seen anything from the team to indicate that they would quit and wrap up shop and leave. In fact, it doesn't seem like that's the type of thing that they would do to me. All right, what else we got in the chat? Yeah, chat. Now, there, there hasn't been a lot uh, in the last little while, not a lot of questions, and we are coming up on, what, we're at 55 minutes right now. So. Okay. So um, we just got a couple, two, yeah, three minutes left. Yeah, I mean, Peace Dog, I don't know if you can answer this quickly, but Peace Dog asks, um, why would Cornucopius put their NFTs on Cardano, but their 
Bitcoin on Binance Smart Chain? Because it wouldn't be tradable if they had released it on Cardano. No DEXs are currently functioning in an easy way. And so it just makes sense for them to put their token out there where it's reachable and tradable. And because they can always then bridge it over. It's not a big deal these days to bridge it over. So uh, a smart decision by them. Thank goodness they didn't put it on Uniswap. They put it on um, <laughs> Pancake Swap on the Binance Smart Chain for the low trading fees. So I don't see that as a problem. In fact, um, when I was talking to a project, uh, Kusama Starter, um, I was telling them, you know, there was a lot of pressure for them to wait and release it on Kusama. Don't put a token on something that's tradable like Ethereum. I told them they'd be crazy not to put it on something tradable like ETH because uh, the Kusama ecosystem is still developing and you need swaps to be able to be there and other things like you'll be shooting yourself in the foot if you wait. That was my advice to them. They did go that route, I, you know, probably because they weighed opinions from about 50 different people and then felt like they made the right decision at least i felt like they did and so cornucopias makes sense to me the decision they made too all right saludos amigo um i saw somebody say something really nice we appreciate it um they said that they love the community um very much appreciate it i hope so right uh i retired back in march we don't have to do this but we wanted to do this channel and create a community of good people that's why we do it like if you join our telegram group and right now it's completely free to join i strongly suggest you do we do have a discord group that you have to enter through our patreon there is a link below on our patreon and you can join our patreon membership but we wanted a community of investor mindseted people that can talk about what is cheap and also kind of strengthen people because it's hard to stay strong in times like this and it really helps when you have people around you who have the right mindset because you'll see over time that this system plays out very very well and not all my picks are going to do like 100x or whatever and they don't have to that's why i diversify across multiple ones because some of them will do better than expected and some will do worse but i specifically have been testing this out in real estate and other things for the past 20 years. I know the system works. You never know that like some particular project could end up having something happen that totally shuts them down, which is specifically why we diversify, but buying while it's low and then selling when it's high, it works. So if you're ready to be a rainmaker and join the Navy SEALs of crypto and level up your crypto game, right place to be. Are you looking for life-changing gains? Are you looking for life-changing gains or even get that car so expensive that it increases in value rather than depreciates? Well, join the Rainmaker family through subscribing as we get into how to analyze projects in ways that turn my portfolio from thousands to millions. And the system that I use to think about it to help keep emotions in check, and it does work. But before it can, you do have to understand the system and rewire the panic sell at the top and the FOMO when prices bottom as well as understand how to find undervalued projects. Now that comes through joining us on a daily basis. If you give this video at least a seven out of 10, please, if you haven't already, hit that like button. If this video sucked and it was six out of 10 or less, hit that dislike button and tell us what sucks so bad. Thanks so much and we will see you all next time. To the space, chasing all of the games, chasing yeah. the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, shit, yeah. right before you could, was taught to buy when it was boring like a rainmaker should. I sure. buy when it's down, don't chase the boats that I miss, uh, cause I always made the time in mind. I sit the one out, cause I'm patient like that, hands out, wait.